Stormy O'Mardian, it's a miracle to me you are even alive. I mean, yes. after your childhood, it's, it's really remarkable. It's a miracle to me, too, and really. When I think about even my childhood and then even later on when I was just walking on my own trying to find healing for the pain that I was suffering, I just took so many chances and just tried so many things that could have killed me. And by the grace of God, I'm here. <laughs> Mental illness is incredibly, unfortunately, common, but your mother mm -hmm. had a severe, untreated case. Yes. And just how bad did it get at it, home? It was bad. Uh, she, um, she was so horrible. She kept me locked in a closet much of my early childhood um, because that's just the way she coped with me, I think. And she put me there for reasons that I didn't understand. And um, I, I remember from as far back as three years old because I remembered things that happened at that time, so I know that's when I, I started to be aware of the closet, and um, the closet was frightening to me. We were in a ranch, isolated from everyone, and um, there was just, there were, we didn't have any running water or you know, plumbing or, or heating or anything like that, and, and things came into the house, mice, snakes, rattlesnakes, um, black widow spiders, all of these things that are so frightening. So I was always afraid in the closet that these things would come into the closet, you know, underneath that, that door. By the time you are a young adult, you have, I, I hope I counted this right in your book, you have over nine phobias, severe phobias. Yes, oh, terrible. Because once I, um, I, I you know, got out of the closet, when, once we moved to California when I was nine, um, well, I didn't have the, the closet anymore. Actually, once we moved from that ranch, I didn't have the closet, wasn't locked in the closet anymore. But my mother's behavior was so erratic, and she was so um, abusive and mean, and, and, and just would just slap me in the face suddenly. And I didn't know why. And, and um, it was just, she called me horrible names and, and uh, th things I can't repeat and said horrible things about me to, my, to me, you know, like you'll never amount to anything, you're always going to be nothing, and all of these things. And so that just, you know, just reinforced everything from my childhood. So once I got out of the house and um, was on my own, um, I had all these phobias. I didn't put it together with the closet. Um, I was afraid, of course, of flying. I was afraid of big places. I was afraid of small, dark places. Um, I was, a, you know, just had a terrible fear of rejection, um, fear of, of people, not knowing what they were going to do and what what could happen to me. Just, uh, just afraid of everything, really. So, so much fear, and that's the way I would describe. If I had to put it in one word, my early life uh, would be fear. And. How does your life meeting the life of Jesus Christ start to change that fear? Well, I was so afraid. Um, I was afraid, of, you know, like a rejection of failure, fear of failure, terrible. And I was working in Hollywood um, on TV shows there. Merv Griffin, uh, Sunny Boys, everything like that. Yeah, wow, you have Glenn Campbell, all, yeah. Glenn Campbell, all <laughs> yeah, the yeah, big Hollywood names Palace, here, singer yeah. and dancer. Yeah, right, exactly. And But I was just suffering because I was always afraid that people were going to find out I was nothing. You know, people were going to find out, just like my mother said, I am nothing and it'll never amount to anything. And I just got more and more depressed and anxious and fearful. And so I, um, I had tried, attempted to kill myself when I was 14, and that failed um, because my mother had, for whatever reason, she was always afraid someone was going to kill her. So she transferred all the pills into different bottles, and so I ended up taking pills that could have killed me but didn't. Um, and then uh, the ones that would have killed me, the sleeping pills and everything, she had put in somewhere else, and so they were all transferred everywhere. And so my mother's craziness really saved my life, you know, um, as far as that goes. But uh, once that happened, once I woke up and I expected to die and I woke up and I was really sick, I just decided I was going to try, I was going to work as hard as I could to make something of my life, you know, to go to, go to college, to, to um, you know, be, be able to... Um, develop some kind of talent that would that way I could work, you know. And so it was like um, 14 years later when I was 28 years old that I'd done all that, had gone to college and, and was working and should have felt great about where I was and I was successful as far as just working all the time in Hollywood. 
But I was so depressed. I just couldn't, I couldn't shake the anxiety and the fear. I couldn't get rid of it. I just couldn't get rid of it. And so I thought, I just, I can't deal with the pain anymore. And I started collecting sleeping pills that I knew were sleeping pills. And I knew, you know, you couldn't just get them as easily as you can today. You, I get a couple from one friend and a couple from another and like that. I, thought, I was just accumulating enough to do the job. And, but before I did it, um, a friend of mine took, who I was working with, uh, she was a singer too, and she took me to meet her pastor and said, you've got to go, I've, you've got to go and meet my pastor, just please, you know. Okay. I, I want to I start there again in a moment. Okay. Because we're going we're gonna to be back with Stormy. Yeah. This was kind of a scary thing for you. Yes. To go and meet a pastor about yeah. the flat out fear you were gripped with, suicidal yes. fear. Yes. Okay, we'll be back with more with Stormy O'Martian after this.